This summer I had an itch to play some Skate 3. It's actually a somewhat frequent itch for me, not as frequent as wanting to start a new Minecraft 1.12 server with carpet mod and a great quad witch hut spawn, or the itch to actually get good at CS by actually practicing with aim trainers and practice maps, but still frequent. Frequent enough for me to actually go and download a experimental PlayStation 3 emulator and some pretty fishy software to my totally unprotected PC. Hi, um... Uh, credit to Amazon and 66, this guy over here. But you can just simply call me Amazon. Today we take a look at the simple, yet uncompromising challenge of a truly analog game. A genre of game that died shortly after release of this one and a genre that I truly cherish with the entirety of my being. Games that take real skill in order to just simply move forward without falling over. Games like Super Monkey Ball, the surfing game mode in a Source Engine game, Rocket League and Spider-Man 2. These games all feel awful if you haven't mastered the movement at least somewhat. Like learning how to walk again but on a screen and with seemingly unresponsive and stupid controls. Take Spider-Man 2 for example. I really struggled to hone in on a small target when moving on the ground, but zooming through the sky at 200 miles an hour is unmatched to this very day. These movement systems make these games worth playing, while some of them, like in the case of Monkey Ball, where they are the entire game. This is what sets skates apart from its contemporaries. There are no ways, outside of being a robot, to replicate one trick from another. Every micrometer of movement from your thumb to the two control sticks will make the trick your own. This will make the game feel inconsistent to some, but others will realize that this means that the game will never truly be completed. Or at least not within your or anyone else's lifetime. Skate 3 is a game that takes the classic Todd Howard meme, see that mountain? You can climb it to new heights. By replacing climbing with skating and the mountain with a park bench, a flight of stairs or a misplaced piece of plywood. It's a game that, after a short and mostly skippable intro, gives you every trick in the book. It doesn't put anything behind the bars of a story mode, outside of a few skate parks that for some ungodly reason lags so much it feels like they were made in a side mode to the game mode based on building skate parks. Oh, maybe because they are. But never mind all that. What you really want to know right now is how to do a 180 into a dark slide flip out. So let's go through it from the very beginning that is. First of all, go to this website. Now don't worry, if this site is filled with malignant evil viruses, we're both fucked. Get a copy of Skate 3 and a good enough CPU to emulate the overcompilated and unruly architecture of the PlayStation 3 and you're good to go. This game is best played on the easy difficulty setting, as it gives way for some of the coolest shit this game has to offer. Faster speeds without falling, higher falls without breaking your legs and easier landings when doing crazy combos. Also. Please play this game with a controller. Sure, there are probably ways to play it with a keyboard and mouse or whatever, but please, trust me, this game is made for a dual stick controller. Preferably a PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4 controller, because it's superior to all the other controllers ever made, like ever. Also, PlayStation is better than Xbox. Who cares about Forza Horizon? We got PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale, man! Skate 3, unlike its contemporaries in the form of the Tony Hawk franchise, uses the sticks for its flip tricks. Something that might seem obvious to some, it just works that great, but to others this will feel completely and utterly wrong. But to me, someone that played Tony Hawk just to make this video, pressing a button to do a trick feels like the equivalent of tapping the emote button in Super Smash Bros. Your character does a cool little animation that might get interrupted by the pavement hitting you at 20 miles per hour. It's comparably mindless and unmistakingly 
digital. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the little time I spend with the Tony Hawk franchise. It's a great game that does some things better than Skate, and it's more arcadey, while Skate, somewhat unconvincingly, tries to mirror reality at least somewhat. The flick of the right stick in the Skate series of games feel like an analog conversion of power from the end of your right thumb to the in-game engine. It does all of this without being hard. Sure, it's unruly and unintuitive at first, but once you start to get a grip, this game can sing for its players. Unless you just inexplicably fly into the wall at 100 miles per hour. A pretty regular occurrence. This is one of the reasons this game is so well known though, and had a resurgence not so recently. Let's players like the pretty big YouTuber PewDiePie showcase the goofy and glitchy side of an almost physics based game. This is what really got me into the game. I had seen the game in a retro gaming store pretty close to my house, but skating games are really boring, right? As it turns out, I was wrong. This one was more than just a sports game. It was a way to express yourself in an analog engine. Or a way to kind of just laugh at the unpolished and easily exploited physics. With the explaining and lollygagging done and dusted, let's look at Skate 3's movement mechanics. How to move forward, but more importantly, how to do a miracle whip in the Super Ultra Mega Park. The Skate series of games wanted to make the art of skateboarding more immersive. The so called Flick It system revolutionized the skate genre of games by replacing the movement of pressing a button with the flicking of your right stick. It just works. In order to move forward, you simply tap the X or the square button. This might seem contradictory, but if I had to use both the sticks in a kicking motion, I think this game would have gone from intuitive and semi-realistic to unintuitive and too realistic to be fun. The left stick is instead interrupted with being the steering wheel, or if in the air, the way to spin. To jump, or as the skaters call it, Oli is pretty simple. Not as simple as pressing a single button in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, but simple nonetheless. First, pull down on your board moving stick. The flick stick, if you may. Then flick it quickly straight upwards and you'll go flying. To then satisfyingly smack down on the ground with a sound that will live in your mind forever after playing this game long enough. This can also be reversed. A so-called nolly can be performed by instead flicking the stick from the top to the bottom. But nobody wants to go around a flat plane doing simple ollies and nollies. So let's take to the streets and do some more advanced stuff. Starting with a simple kickflip. Probably the most famous skate trick of all time. This trick doesn't differ that much from the ollie in difficulty. But it lacks the same safety and height that it gives you. But damn does it look a hundred times better. Instead of flicking straight up, you do it at a bit of an angle, like a slanted V-shape. This is just the start however, as there are countless of combos with the flick it system. My favorite being underflips, where in the middle of a flip trick, the player character flips the board back the way it came. A trick that might look unrealistic, but after searching it up on the world wide web, I can confirm that it isn't. These tricks on their own look great, but what makes this game so great is stringing them together with other types of tricks, most of which I won't mention. First of all, grinds. Grinds are the first real hurdles in the game for newcomers. They are precise, or at least relatively so. In, once again, Tony Hawk, this simple act is easy, and to vary it, you press buttons in the right order, look at a cool animation, and jump off. In Skate, you have to first jump at your preferred grind, in this case the railing to a steer, being careful to not go too fast or too slow, aiming a bit next to the rail in order to not just into it and bail, or to jump over it and fail completely. 
there's some pretty precise timing here too. Too early and you'll just miss, or too late and you'll hit the railing on the way up, often leading to a pretty gnarly bail. When you're in the air you can then control the board with your left stick, making different grinds possible. Then you get to watch that same animation, but you still have to pay attention, because you're losing speed and you need to flip out of your grind and ah, oh, you bailed again. This is the art of the skate franchise. Doing something really hard after trying 200 times. Skating around the open world and finding that perfect spot. Plotting a line, setting a checkpoint to then execute. This is the gameplay loop of the entire game. And a gameplay loop that will keep you engaged for a very long time. I attribute this to the movement system first and foremost, but let's not leave the open world out. This open world is well made. It's not polished or even good looking for the time, but damn is it made for skating. Few places aren't especially made for skating, and these few in between areas almost always lead to a place with a better skating experience. They make the open world more realistic and immersive, but ultimately they make the open world just a tad bit worse. Oh, and the world does feel very unpolished at times. Weird bumps and wonky modeling on the ground, to name a few. Is the main story something to even consider playing? No. Unless you really want a reason to play the game, as it acts as a bit of a tutorial and also gives you some solid goals. It's also pretty fun to go for some high scores and stuff. Oh, and by completing challenges, you unlock cosmetics, all of which look pretty bad. What you should do instead is just go around the open world, look for a cool spot and just get down to brass tacts. That's what I do. I just skate for skating's sake, even though I could be more productive. <sighs> I shouldn't even be playing this. This video shouldn't exist. I shouldn't have gone all the way back just to try and relive that unending amount of sweet, sweet nostalgia and comfort of a game that I already know works for me. I'm done with this game, right? I finished the main missions, I didn't 100% it or whatever, but I've probably got hundreds of hours in this game by now. I keep getting stuck on the good old days. It's addicting, and I will do it again, but this time I think I maybe shouldn't have. I have so many games I want to play, most of which are just a double click away. This leads to the reason why I'm currently procrastinating and playing this game. A game that I know won't disappoint. But this also somehow goes deeper. Because as I'm writing this, RPCS3 is open in the background, my PS4 controller connected, and the last episode of the almost perfect Netflix series Better Call Saul is on on my right monitor. I should be making this video with my entire being, right? I keep searching for that perfect game that will outdo the ones I've played so far. But maybe I shouldn't. I should be playing games just to enjoy myself, to feel something. But what if I'm missing something? I have a serious fear of missing out. What you might know as FOMO. I've talked about this in a previous video, but I'll just go for it anyway. I want to experience the best of the best. The most divisive titles in the history of gaming. The titles that form the current landscape of gaming today. I've done this a lot with movies and TV series too, and I enjoy it. I don't like to watch stuff that's bad on purpose, so I do the opposite. I watch whatever I think will be very good. I go on IMDB and I look at the top rated stuff. I've started doing this with the new series on my channel, Blank, the quest play everything. I started out strong with the, at the time, mind-bending first-person shooter Doom, but I have so many more titles to get through, old and new. I have never played Chrono Trigger, or the new Final Fantasy remake for example. I should be playing those instead of Skate 3 for another 30 hours, 
adding to my already bloated number. But that is kind of the point with this game. Let me tell you why. The fact of the matter is that this is what this game is actually all about. Fuck the main missions and realism. Actually, let's not bother with any other games. There's no reason to get deep into another Japanese RPG with slow and boring turn-based combat. Let's just do a T-pose and hit the ground so hard we break most of our bones in our body. Let's not use the half pipes or skate parks. Let's not browse Steam for underappreciated games that, with more attention, could, but probably isn't, be the greatest game of all time. At least to some lone reviewer. Let's just climb the mountain and jump like a bald eagle, soaring through the sky. Maybe skate down the waterway near the observatory, jumping over the bridge at breakneck speeds. And all of this is okay. Of course it is. They are just games. But I get bogged down in these gaming slumps of mine. I want to play more, even if my body doesn't. I keep procrastinating by playing and doing stuff I already know works for me. But again, that's okay sometimes. Or even all the time. But at what point does a simple plateau turn into procrastination? And when do I need to get off my ass and sit back down again to play something? I don't know the answer to these questions. But what I do know is that the game I play next will feel that much more rewarding because of them. Thanks for watching. I recently had a new Patreon join me, so that's awesome and thank you. But this also means that almost every single poll I do from now on will be a draw, which is a good problem to have. This video took a bit longer than anticipated, and I won't bog you down with all the details, but let's just say that my house has turned into a hotel as of late. But this will change in the coming weeks, as school is starting, the summer is coming to a close, and the family is moving back to town. I, on the other hand, will be staying, so expect some serious work from me in the coming month. That will be all for now, so once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all soon.